Hey guys, I could not commit to any video goggles yet. Instead, I decided to get everything to build my own small diversity receiver base station with DVR. An RX5808 Pro diversity receiver module, which comes with a 128 by 64 pixel OLED display. It has a 5 volt DC DC converter on board and you can power it directly from a 3 or 4S battery. Video, audio and 5 volt are conveniently broken out on the bottom pins. An eShin Pro DVR, which records audio and video to SD card in MJPEG format and 30 frames per second. It also comes with all the needed wiring. An XT60 connector with a little bit of wire. And since the receiver comes with a 3.5mm 4 pole jack, I decided I will also equip the DVR with one. And last but not least, a 3D printed case to hold it all together. You can find links for all the parts down in the description. I got all of it from Banggood except for the 3.5mm jack which I got from my local electronic component dealer. Before soldering everything together I like to make a proof of concept on breadboard to see if everything is working as I would expect. At this stage I try to keep soldering to a minimum. Just in case a part is DOA it is easier to get replacement when everything looks original. In this case I am only soldering the AV jack to the cable supplied with the DVR and extending the input connector for the DVR with a little bit of wire so I can directly stick it into the breadboard. This is my first time soldering through the viewfinder of the camera. I have soldered before, even if it might not look like it from the footage. So here it is, the test setup on breadboard. Let's plug it in and see if everything is working as expected. Everything is lighting up, no magic smoke, so let's plug in the camera. On the OLED screen you can see the peak as soon as I power on the camera. Let's tune into the signal. Thanks to the receiver's auto search this is only a matter of seconds. Band A, channel 2, exactly what I said on the transmitter. So let's see if recording is working. The LED is flashing to indicate that the recording is in progress. A quick look on the control monitor confirms that. So let's start to put it all together. I start by desoldering the bottom pins from the receiver, since I want to directly solder the display and DVR. This must be the most stubborn connector I have dealt with in quite some time. Usually I get very good and quick results with a little bit of flux and some desoldering wick. But this one was a real fight. Not sure what the problem was, but it felt a little bit as if the connector was glued to the board. Same thing with the display, although this connector was not as tough as the other one. Here I am measuring the pinout of the 3.5mm jack. When I see a 4 pole 3.5mm jack, I instantly assume classic camcorder pinout. Turns out that is a mistake, but more on that later. Now I check if all the ground cables are connected internally and strip the ones I do not need. I do this by inserting a needle under the small plastic latch that is holding the contact down and pulling the cable out. Since the DVR will live inside the case with the receiver, it no longer needs its own case. Here I am removing the board from the case and test fitting it into the new case after inserting the buttons. I am adding data and power lines to the display. The XT60 connector I decided to use here comes with a 16 gauge cable. A bit too beefy to fit it nicely beneath the board, so I'm thinning out the cable a bit and heat shrinking it. But since the receiver will not draw crazy amounts of power, I feel this hack is acceptable. The display holder is a bit higher than the display itself, and here I melt the corners a little bit over the display so that it stays in place. The cables are test fitted, shortened to the length they need to be, tinned and soldered to the receiver.
I last checked with the power supply, everything is looking good, so let's put it together. The XC60 connector is super glued in place, so that it does not come out when disconnecting the battery. The cable from the XC60 connector is a bit stubborn, but finally does what I want. Just make sure that you did not short out the battery contacts, or you will have a bad time when connecting the battery. All done, the moment of truth, let's test it from the battery. And here is the point where I am re-soldering the connector, since it does not have the same pinout as the classic AV camcorder pinout, not even close. Let me now give you a short tour through the receiver menu. You navigate through the menu with the three position switch on the top. In the diversity menu you can set a single receiver module if you want to only use a single antenna or leave it on auto, so it will switch between the receiver with the strongest signal. In the general menu you can set call sign and enable or disable beeps, which does not really matter since I did not use the buzzer that came with the board. As I plug in the camera, you can see the peak on the band scanner. With auto search, you can tune right into the signal. Now let's take a look at the DVR interface. On the bottom right you can see an estimation of how long you can record until the SD card is full. So it's about 4 hours on the VGA setting and the 4GB SD card. By pressing the middle button for a couple of seconds you enter the main menu. The menu has quite some options. You can limit the recording time of your videos, which in my opinion does not make too much sense, so I leave it off. You can disable recording the sound, which may come in handy when you are not using a mic and can save a little bit of space. You can choose between three sizes, VGA, which is 640x480, D1, which is 720x480 and HD, which is 1280x480. When you press the middle button again, you switch to the setup menu. Here you can format your SD card, as you see me doing right now. Further, you can switch output modes between NTSC and PAL. You can also choose from a multitude of languages for the interface. By pressing the middle button again, you leave the menu. If you press the right button, the recording is started and the LED begins to flash. As you can see, the live image is quite laggy during recording, so do not fly from the DVR jack, but rather from the receiver jack directly. The recording is stopped by pressing the right button a second time. When you press the left button for a couple of seconds, you get to the playback menu, where you can review your files. As you can see, the video here is not lagging at all. You can even fast forward the playback, if you like. All in all, I am pretty satisfied with this build. I let it run for a couple of hours to see how hot it would get, since this version of the case does not have air slits. It gets warm, but the PLA is not deforming, which for me is a sign that no ventilation is needed. I might still make a version with slits, just in case. The parts total to about 50 bucks. 
which is not bad at all. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, no matter if it's about the build or any specific parts used. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this, please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it.